Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are going to look into introduction to IO stream. So we will look into the fundamentals, what does IO stream mean? We will also look into IO stream nomenclature. So that is by looking at the name of a class of an IO stream, you can identify what exactly does that class do. So far in this series, we have seen how to represent a file in Java program. So we use file.java class. So that class represents the physical file that is present on the disk. We have also seen that file.java class does not read the content of the file and it also does not write any content to the file, but it only represents the file. IO streams are used to read and write the content to the file. Conceptually, a stream could be thought of never ending data like a stream of water. There is a start of a stream and then there is somewhere at end of a stream. We work on a block of data and when we are done, we move on to the next block of data. Remember that this block is very well defined and is of a specific size. Now you might ask if you are reading the data block by block, how would the class would know when does the stream end? And for that, the Java creators have identified a special value, which is minus one at the end, which is also known as end of file, EOF. And that's how your, your program will know that we have now reached to the end of the stream and it should stop reading. This slide shows you the main basic IO stream class names. And I'm going to read them one by one so that you get familiarized with the names to start with. So we have file input stream, file output stream, file reader, file writer, buffered input stream, buffered output stream, buffered reader, buffered writer, object input stream, object output stream, print stream, and print writer. Don't worry if you don't recognize these class names or what they do. By the end of this video, you will have a fair good idea on what each class does. To understand the naming conventions, let's understand the different classifications of the stream class. A stream class can be a byte stream or it can be a character stream. A stream class can be input stream or an output stream. Also a stream class can be a low level stream and a high level stream and we will see in the following slides what they really mean. So let's start with the byte versus character stream. A byte stream is a class that reads or writes the binary data which means it reads zeros and ones. The class name ends with the word stream so that it's very important so if a class name has a stream then that class is a byte stream. Now character stream. A character stream reads and writes text data. You might ask, in computers, everything is a binary, everything is zeros and ones. Then what does it mean by text data? I'll actually explain you on that next slide, but hold that thought in. And just remember, so these types of classes use reader, or writer in its name. Now I'll try to explain you what does it mean reading a byte stream and reading a text data. So we have already seen, so this is a stream of data. When the byte stream reads, so let's say we are reading one byte at a time. So we will read eight bits. Once we're done, we move on to the next eight bits. Now character streams, let's say this is stream of data and whenever we work on the character stream we also look into the encoding of the characters. I have already made a video on what encoding is. I will put a link in this video. If you want to go into details on the encoding feel free to go through it but at a very high level we have to define an encoding and in this case let's say this particular text data is UTF-16 encoded and it's in big endian. 
What that means is that to form a one character, we will use 16 bits. When we say that a class is a character stream, it reads one character at a time. So this particular highlighted bits that you see represents A. Once we are done reading A, we move on to character B. So we are reading the data character by character. In this case, since the encoding is UTF-16, we are reading 16 bits at a time. But if it's a different encoding, then we would read different bits at a time. But the main concept is that whatever data the class will read, it will form a character. This is the main difference between a byte stream and a character stream. So this slide has the classes that we have already seen. Now let's try to see if we can classify our existing classes. Let's try to find the byte stream classes versus character stream classes. These highlighted classes are the byte stream because they have a stream at the end of their name. And these classes are the character streams. They have either reader or writer at the end of their name. Now moving on to the next classification, which is input versus output stream. An input stream reads the data from the file and the class name has input or reader in its name. An output stream is the one that writes the data to the file. A name of the class will have either output or writer in its name. Now let's go back to our table. These highlighted class are the input streams. So they read the data from the file. The first three, the top three you see are byte readers because they are reading the byte data. The other two that you see are character readers because they are reading the character data. And how can you tell? We have already seen by the name of the class tells us whether it's a byte stream or a character stream reader. The other classes are the output stream. They are writing something to the file. So again, similarly, these classes that you see are the byte writers and these classes that you see are the character writers. So all of them are writers. Some of them are byte writers and others are characters. So depending on whether you want one or the other, you will create an instance. We'll see some examples in the following videos. Now the third classification is low level stream versus high level stream. Low level streams are the classes that work directly with the file on the storage. A high level streams are the wrapper around the low level class. Let's go back to our table. So these are the classes that are low level classes and these are the high level classes. The way you can tell the difference between low level and high level is the name of the class will have file in it. If it's a low level class, that means it's directly working with the file. If it does not have a file in its name, that means it's a high level class. Now let's discuss the concept of wrapping. So in this example that you see on the screen, buffered input stream is wrapping file input stream and object input stream is wrapping buffered input stream. So the concept of wrapping is that whenever a method is called on a class, in this case, we are calling read object on object input stream. Within the implementation of read object, it will be using some method of buffered input stream. And if you drill down to the implementation of that method, you will see it will use the methods of file input stream. So we are effectively wrapping one class on the top of another. And in this class, as we just discussed that high level class will wrap a low level class. So buffered input stream is a high level is wrapping a low level class called file input stream. An object input stream, which is a high level class, is wrapping buffered input stream, which is also high level. So high level class can wrap another high level class, but for a high level class to work with the file, it have to use some low level class. In this case, file input stream is that low level class. 
high level class cannot work directly with files that is sitting on the disk. On this screen, I have just represented the four different hierarchies. Let's look into the parents. So we have input stream, output stream, reader, and writer. So these four are the abstract classes. By now, I think you should have some idea what input stream is, what output stream is, and similarly readers and writer. The reason why I have this hierarchy here is, has to do with wrapping. In most of the cases, whenever we wrap one class with another, their parents has to match. So that is, they have to be from the same hierarchy. There are some exceptions which we will see, but for you to remember which classes can be wrapped with what, just remember that they almost always have to be from the same hierarchy. So if we try to mix and match between two different hierarchies, the wrapping will not work. Just to give you an example, here is a wrapping example of buffered input stream is wrapping file reader. So they both are from a different hierarchies and buffered input stream is a byte stream. File reader is a character reader. So this wrapping will not work. It will give a compilation error. Now in this case, buffered writer is trying to wrap file output stream. Buffered writer and file output stream are from two different hierarchies. And the main reason is the buffer writer is writing characters and the file output stream is a byte stream. So we can't mix and match characters and byte streams. Now how about this? We have object input stream and we have file output stream. So the reason why these does not work is because we have one is input stream, the other one is output stream. So they are from different hierarchies, of course. Also, we can't mix and match inputs and outputs. We can copy data from one file into another, but the way we do that is not by wrapping. I'll show you example in the following videos in future. So this is not a valid example. And the way you can remember is they are actually from a two different hierarchies. Now, how about this? Buffered input stream and input stream. Can we do this wrapping? Even though they are from the same hierarchy, the reason why this will not work is because input stream is a abstract class and we can't create an instance. So you need to be a bit careful in the exam, if you're sitting in an exam on how the wrapping is done. But even in general, while you do your day-to-day -day development, just keep this hierarchy in mind. So one another note that I wanted to make before we move on is that in every hierarchy, you will see there is a class that has a name buffered in it. So these buffered classes do the operations in batches. And because of that, they are very performant. So in our regular day-to-day -day work, we should not work with the low-level classes. We should try to use buffered because they are highly performant. Now, in the end, let's uh, summarize what we have seen so far. The very first thing is classes with input stream or output stream in its name reads and writes binary data. The classes with reader or writer in its name reads or write text data. High level classes are built on top of another stream using a mechanism called wrapping. The classes having buffered in its name reads or write the data in batches, so they are very performant. Most but not all the output classes have corresponding input classes. Uh, this is something we haven't seen. Let me go back to the previous slide. In this case, you see we have a print writer. We don't have a corresponding readers class. And print stream doesn't have a corresponding class in the input stream hierarchy. So this, these two classes are kind of exception, but most of the others will always have a input and output classes. Now the final point in summary is with few exceptions, you only wrap with the same hierarchy. So we have seen those hierarchy, the wrapping will happen 
only between the classes of the same hierarchy. And the exception that I'm talking about here is the print writer. So the print writer can wrap file output writer. So they both are from the two different hierarchies, but we can still wrap them. Now we reached to the end of the video. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.